All right, hello everyone. I'm Paul Stetrick with Nepsi, Northeast Power Systems, Inc. I'm here today to speak about a new piece of test equipment we have. It's a partial discharge test set. Uh, we just purchased this. Partial discharge testing is an important test uh, for any uh, piece of electrical equipment at the medium voltage. Uh, the reason being is partial discharge within a device is a measure of corona, corona discharge. Uh, it's measured in picocoulombs. Um, it's a measure of how much corona discharge you have in the insulation system of your piece of equipment. When you have corona, you have aging. Aging is occurring. It's causing failure within the equipment. And it's a, it's a thing that, takes, that happens over time. So there are uh, tests uh, dictated by uh, the IEEE C 37301. Uh, there's also uh, tests uh, dictated by C 22.2 of the Canadian CSA standard uh, number 31 2014. So we purchased this piece of test equipment to, um, to test our equipment to make sure that we are within the partial discharge levels dictated by those standards. So uh, here is um, the piece of test equipment we purchased. It's a Texix um, DDX9121B. This is the actual partial discharge detector. Over here we also purchased um, a coupling capacitor by Hayfley and um, we have a, a uh, matching impedance down here and over here we have the actual test devices that we're going to be testing and we have our high voltage source. So the high voltage source can go to 50 kV. Uh, the output of this is a 60 Hertz AC waveform. It feeds into a filter here. The output of the filter hits the test equipment. Uh, so we have three iron core reactors and uh, this is for a project that we're currently working on. These reactors are designed for 110 kV BIL. Uh, this is a, a fifth tune reactor. It's actually rated six megabars. Uh, the second one is a seventh tune reactor rated four megabars. And the last one is an 11th tune reactor rated for 10 megabars. Interesting to note is that the, the, the smallest reactor in the line here actually has the highest reactor power rating and it's because of the tuning frequency. The tuning frequency uh, determines the voltage drop across the reactor and oftentimes higher tuned uh, tuning reactors are smaller in size. So the first thing we do to run this test is we make all the connections of course and then we do a we do a, um, a calibration. So I have a calibrator here. This is part of the Hayfleet Hep uh, Hypertronic system. That's a 9511 uh, KAL. So I have it set at 100 picocoulombs. Uh, through the test set and the, the purpose of this is to calibrate the piece of uh, Equipment through the detector. So we have Jessica Stetrick here who's running the uh, Computer and she'll kind of go through what she's doing here. Hello, everybody. Uh, so I'm working on I'm working with the uh, DDX 9121B remote control. This is the software that came with the PD detector um, as Paul said he just connected the calibration to the uh, coupling capacitors and go here uh, set the 100 pico coulombs because that's what he set the other device to and hit calibrate and that just simply uh, calibrates what is being read by the PD detector. Um, here is a graph showing the pico coulombs that it's reading and if you note here there's 100 pico coulombs which is right where all these uh, spikes are um, signals and they're right at the 100 pico coulombs so uh, it is calibrated and here you can see as well. Okay, so I want to disconnect the uh, calibrator. If we don't do that, we will blow it up. And it's an expensive little device. So we disconnect that. And uh, as you're disconnected, if you want to just note over here, um, it is disconnected and there's a little bit of noise. That's just, uh, it's, you know, five pico coulombs. It's, it's not very much. It's, I think, normal to have some noise seen. Um, but that's just something to note that we did take the calibrator off and so it's, it's uh, white noise. It's white noise. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I'm going to go up to 10 kV because now we have to uh, calibrate the actual, um, the actual power source voltage, test voltage into the set. So I power on and I'm going to go to 10 kV and then Jessica actually will calibrate um, the, the detector for, for the actual 10 kV value. Uh, so I'm at 10 kV here, and incidentally, this is a calibrated device. All Nepsi's test equipment is calibrated once per year. It's important to be working always with calibrated test equipment. 
So Jessica's gonna now calibrate the detector to that 10 kV voltage source. And similar to uh, the Pico Coulomb to forget the calibration, I just set it to 10 kV right here, and you hit calibrate, and overwrite the last calibration that you made, and it will calibrate. And then we can bring the voltage back down and go on with our test. So I bring the voltage down, this effectively uh, grounds everything out. And now I'm going to go to the prescribed test value according to the standard. And the, the, the prescribed test value according to the standard is to go to 0.5 times the withstand voltage rating of the equipment. So in this case, uh, it's a 110 kV BIL. Uh, so for 110 kV BIL, it's customary to test for a one minute withstand uh, for a period of one minute at 50 kV. So the partial discharge test, the objective is to go up to 50% of that value or 25 kV. I go to 25 kV, I hold it for one minute, uh, and then I decrease the voltage uh, down to what a value that's in the CSA standard, C22.2, which in this case would be 10.75 kV. After a two minute hold period, we need to be below 100 picocoulombs to pass a test. In other words, the partial discharge, the corona must go extinct at that point in time. So I raise the voltage to 25 kV and uh, I will use the scale, but then Jessica will also confirm that I'm at 25 kV. 20. Okay, and you can hear that the reactors are starting to make a lot of noise. That's actual corona discharge that you hear. 24, 24 and a half, 25. All right, so we're at 25 kV. We're gonna hold that for a one minute period. And that's being recorded by the instrument. And if you come over here, you can see some uh, extra noise here, the corona uh, happening in this graph, the, at the higher levels in the uh, coulombs. And then if you watch this graph here, there's the, the KV, which we rose up to on the right axis here. And then on the left axis is the, is the pico coulomb level. And as you can see, we're holding it at a pretty constant, but relatively high level because um, it is in a corona state. So the objective here is to bring the equipment up to uh, the corona inception voltage where corona starts and go beyond that so we have clear corona. And ideally when we drop down to 10.75 kV, we are at that point below uh, the inception voltage and it should go extinct. So the extinction voltage is always less than the inception voltage. And this is the desire is that uh, if we have an over voltage on the system and we go into Corona, that once the voltage returns, that the system can return and go Corona free. We're at a minute. So we're at a minute. Uh, so we're gonna back down to 10.75 kV uh, per the standard. And, and Jessica, just let me know when I get there. We're at 11. I think that's good. All right, so if you look at the uh, Pico Coulombs here, you can see that we probably are starting to settle down already. We're still in the red. Um, well, we already... No, we're past. It's... You don't have the, uh, the the set point set at 100 Pico Coulombs. So the, the requirement is that we, build, that we be below 100 Pico Coulombs here. You can see we've already settled down to less than 6 point, uh, well, down the order of 7 Pico Coulombs. Um, so that is a value that we forgot to set. There is a pass fail value. We could have put that value into the into the computer here and set it at 100. But uh, you can see here we're already down to a very low value. So this this would be considered a reactor that has passed the test. So we can do the same test on a whole uh, metal closed system. You can kind of see one here that's under production. We would test the entire piece of equipment and. Uh, the purpose, again, is to ensure that you're gonna get 20 years life out of the equipment. So we do end post testing. Okay, that ensures that, that the design meets BIO. We do withstand testing here with this test set to 50 kV to ensure that your equipment can handle uh, the withstand value for one minute. We also do SFRA testing, which is sweep frequency resonance analysis to confirm the tuning points um, on the filter. And we do all these to make sure that your equipment stays reliable and works for 20 years. Thank you for watching.